What's up, everybody? This your boy, Ant, coming to you live and direct from Beyond Reality Podcast. Make sure y'all like and subscribe to the channel. I got another, another fire, dope episode for y'all. If y'all know this brother music that was playing in this intro, this should be self-explanatory. Mr. Gully B, Mr. Eat the Cake, the King a Boston Crump Movement, the homie Spade. Crump Talk, episode 15, y'all, let's go. Yeah. Hey, what's good, King? <laughs> Yeah. You can hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. How you feeling, bro? Good. I'm doing good. Yeah. Man. Yo. Bro, everybody been asking, man, like, especially me, man. I'm like, where this nigga Spade been at, man? Yeah, you know, doing music still. It's yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's dope, bro. Yeah, I got a fi I got a fire episode for you, bro. We finna rock this shit out, man. It's a lot of unknown history that people don't know about, bro. Especially with your crump legacy, and we damn sure about to let them know today, bro. Yeah, that's fact, bro. You know what I'm saying? Uh, start your intro, bro. Off, let everybody know. Spade, the one and only Spade. Feel me? Gully B, Gully Brooklyn. Uh, Renner Valley, California. I was in the Crump Movement for about 15 years plus. Um, you know, real heavy hitter. And just like he said, I'm the king of Boston. Facts. Hella facts, bro. Like, man, Spade got, Spade, his Crump legacy and, like, career is, like, one of the elites of the elites. For all y'all new dancers that think y'all doing all these shirt tricks, hat tricks, et cetera, et cetera, I want y'all to know y'all got this shit from this nigga, bro. It is not Chez and Tide Eyes that created all these styles in Crump. Spade is one of the dudes that got all y'all doing what y'all doing now. Am I correct, bro? Correct. Riot 2, Riot Hustle, Riot had a lot of input of that. You know, I can honestly say Riot, Riot made me open my eyes to understand that there's more than just a jab in the chest pocket. There's all type of shit that you got in your body. So once he left, got me to understand that, I figured, damn, I put this shit on every day to get dressed. I, I need to use this for something. Okay, so that's, mm -hmm. that's when shirt moves came into play. But really, it, it started with shoe moves. Shoe mm -hmm. moves was the first, and I did it at the call of Buck. Mm -hmm. When it was it was our block, we had a, a battle versus I think the Crushes. If I was it mistaken, and that's when I brought out shoe move. It wasn't chairs at the cage. No, Chase did that after I did that shit. The cage came after. 
That is true. That's when he did that shit. That is true. Let let her, bro. When did you start actually officially like start a crump? I started dancing. Okay, I started. Look, I started dancing for this group called Death Squad, and Death Squad was fucking basically Stucks. Uh, it was Prodigy, but it was a different Prodigy, an IE. I mean, it was like, you know, all all the heavy hitter niggas that was in dancing in the right. IE, you feel me? Was basically like our teachers and shit. So they was already dancing with like Chaz and uh, 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 El Nino, Pino, uh, uh, Dino, all, all of the season. So because it's a lot of niggas that niggas really don't really know about because niggas think Chaz and Whoever rolled with Chess was just the best. Hell nah, bro. Like, a lot of niggas don't know about a nigga named Hoodie. Hoodie was the best. Wasn't nobody better than Hoodie, bro. Couldn't know every battle zone, every, from battle zones to shake cities to everything, Hoodie would be everybody, bro. There's nobody yeah. better than that. I've been guessing about like 14 years. So since I said like the early 2000s, like I'll say like 1998, 99-ish, maybe 2000, mm -hmm. like up in there, started off with a group named Spin Glove, you know, me and Weapon, you know, the hottest niggas in the IE, you know what I mean, coming up because, because of our time, like I said, it was already dancing, going on and shit, but once we came in the wave, it's like we adapted to that shit fast, you know what I'm saying, so blow that shit up kind of knew which way to go and that's what kind of placed us to be able to become uh, crumb kings for right. our okay, you know what I'm saying so I'm pretty sure you know, obviously they seen something in me and him that was unique and different so when when, when y'all was in the spin glow who, who was, was y'all met Uncle D, was he your manager or was he like kind of like seeing over everything? No, Uncle, Uncle D, Uncle D was our manager. You feel me? He was like you know, me, making sure we had basically all our shoes, shirts, niggas had dough, practice places and practices at. Uh, so we did a lot of different battles and shit. You know what I'm saying? We, we did, you know, one time the clown was doing little battle zones and shit. He was always going up there competing. Um, yeah, he's pretty much, pretty much like you know, manager. But that was Uncle D, so you know, he was making sure everything good. Same shit, Papa Sam. Right. You know what I'm no difference. The same shit as uh, you know, uh, what you call it, dad that's over there. You know what I'm saying? So, same shit. Just making sure everybody staying on top of their shit. Right. Yeah, facts. So you once y'all left all that, you and um Casey, he went to feds and you went to foundation, right? Uh, yeah, I went to I started fucking with foundation, but I can't say I was a, like I got put on I was I was like more affiliated because at heart, at heart. I was still like, you know what I'm saying? Okay, look, look it's, it's it's weird. Look, look, this how it is. It's a lot of that they didn't even have to get a put on because, see, the feds, it wasn't just like dancing. Nigga, if you think about it, everybody else from the Federation, they all lived in Reno Valley. Low right. key. So it was more like a city thing. A family thing, we're a brotherhood. So it's like, even if I wasn't from feds and I wanted to go be over there from SK, it's like I'm still from feds because this is where I'm from. This is my nigga. Right. You feel me? So right. I always just affiliated with other people. You feel me? I never really like joined no group. The only group I ever was really like, really joined with anything of my own shit. You feel me? Or. Mm -hmm. 
or, 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 or no come kings per se for that, you know what I mean, the time that it was. Um, besides that, me and Whippin always had our own shit. You know? Facts. Definitely facts. Now, speaking of Crump Kings, bro, was your official put on that flash battle? Yeah, that was my official put on. How did that all play, play about that, you battling him? Uh, on my ride, I was just chilling. Like, I literally remember this shit. I was at this nigga house. We were just chilling. And uh, fucking, I got a uh, riot. I had to leave because riot had to go. Why I had to go do, you know what I'm saying? I guess meet up at a Koki house in uh, Sherman Oaks. So they had to do some stuff. So I go, he take me back to Mobile, whatever. So now I'm at, uh, I'm chilling. I don't know where I was chilling at, but you know, dancing shit. Then, you know, me and Weapon got a call, like, nigga, nigga, what you call him? Y'all want to battle for a crunking spot? I'm like, and by that time, I'm already low key, like in my prime already. So right. I'm, I'm ready to do anything. Like, nigga, it's whatever. You know what I'm saying? So once that, he got that call, shit, we, 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 we drove out there and, you know, we had a battle. Mm -hmm. They voted. And all the companies were there. They, they voted who they won, who, who they thought won and whatnot. And shit, that's that. It, what people don't know is that with Crump Kings, bro, it's like from the outside, a lot of people thought it was a certain way. Tell everybody how like how that shit really went down, bro. Um, clarify your question a little bit more. Like the ins and outs of, of Crump Kings. Like people thought that all y'all did was battle and then that was that. Or it, see, it's like this, too. <laughs> everybody always <laughs> excuse me, it's bad, but everybody always think what's on the outside is what it really is. And it's not, you feel me? A lot of that shit, like honestly, now that I could really like have real good recognition and because I'm a little bit more mature, older and wiser, a lot of that shit is just marketing. A lot of that shit was just a lot of marketing and planning to where you can see where certain people have benefited it off of being, being able to expand. Being able to Basketball players don't fucking play games all fucking day. They don't fucking, you know what I mean? They may show that for perception, but they don't. It's a business, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. It wasn't all cracked up how everybody made it to be, you feel me? So, like, yeah, it wasn't really all like that. Yeah, man, like, me doing these, me doing these interviews, bro, like, a lot of people are starting to like to hear from like the true like members and you know the OGs and vets of that era, bro, and y'all letting them, like know what's really happened in that movement. Say it again. Say it again. I said with with me doing all these interviews, bro, it's like shedding the light on everyone that was actually in that movement and people starting to hear the truth about like what really went on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro, like, people don't understand that a lot of us was really paying, a lot of, uh, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of regular life stuff was happening before our eyes in this movement, but we would just, we didn't pay attention to it. But that just right. goes with calm. That just goes with calm, wisdom, and understanding. You know what I'm saying? Using your own mind and your eyes to see shit and understand shit. I'm about to, yo, bro, I'm about to throw out this name, right? And I want you to tell everybody, like, what he meant to your career. Because for those who don't know, you was part of something that, to me, that was better than Crump Kings. You ready for the name? Robert Gilliam. 
Extreme movement. Like the thing with see Rob, the thing with Rob was he wasn't a crump athlete. Like he was a civilian. He was a he was a, an innocent bystander. He was someone outside looking in. He just loved the dance for the dance. You feel me? So every time he was like. I think that's why we call it extreme movement, bro. Rob, that's a good dude. There's probably like there's one person around that camp I didn't really like. Like, well, I didn't like his competitiveness because in my mind I know, like, bro, you like you lightweight like garbage, but you only get in the pass because of Rob. You know, but I'm gonna say your name, but. He, <laughs> can we, yo, you, could you let us know what, who that person is? Show food. Show food is like, get about there. Like, show food. Really? Yeah. yeah. It was tight. It was tight, but it was just, you know, some people overdo it because they feel like, well, I know him and I fuck with him and he's the guy, so I could do shit to throw my weight around, but. In life, you can't do that, nigga. Your weight, your mouth, got to match your hands. Your hands got to match your speed. You got everything got to match. Nigga. You can't just be, think you can just throw your weight around and shit. It's because Mayweather's your brother. That don't mean right. shit. So, he used to do that a lot of time. I mean, all the little sessions and all that shit. And then, plus, I didn't like the dress. The dress is <laughs> Cool dude, oh my God. Yeah, facts, man. He he came in kind of like at the tail end of uh, you know. I, let's talk about like the early, early, early uh, members of the dream movement, like the classic shit. Oh, like, like, like you, like nah, not even no. I'm not even talking about Mickey or none of them. I'm talking about you, J Hit, J Street, Swings. Oh, that early yeah, that Ra Rascal, Princess Rascal. That that extreme movement, weapon, your brother. I feel like I feel like I honestly feel like in that era, in that era, like if a true movement really would have battled every group, we couldn't nobody beat it. I agree. I think we just missing one person, and in, in my personal opinion, because. This one person is, 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 is like he's important to the in the empire, and, we, and that and, and it's somebody you gotta to show up do an interview to. Like, I swear to God, we just go out crazy. Stucks, Stucks is important. Stucks is one important person in the, in the empire. Shit, period. I don't think nobody could have either. So Rascal was fucking crazy. J Street, I got like J Street, that's my nigga. J Street, hard. J Street was hard, you feel me? Like everybody had styles, you feel me? Like, everybody had their own style, style bro. When we wasn't dancing like who this, who was somebody told us we need to dance like that. We had styles, and I thought that's what Crump was bringing all of us together, unity for different styles to dance different. You feel me? Like I'm pretty sure, you know. In the Bible, David didn't dance the same every time he came in the temple. We had different feelings. So, I, like, everybody should be able to dance different. You know what I mean? So, yeah, we all had different styles. Man. Like, nobody danced the same. Like, even to this day, you're, like, you can still still see the similarities in different states, counties, and all that. Like, like when you look at L.A. County, you can tell everybody in L.A. got a similar style. When you look at, like, it's different states, like, you know, Texas, niggas dance a similar style. But when you look at Inland Empire, you can't say that. We all got different fucking styles. I don't know why it is. Maybe it's because of like, you know what I'm saying? Maybe some people from our lineage, like my era and before, when we start getting big homies from different areas and stuff, then we come back and, you know what I'm saying, we develop something bigger. But I always known for a fact, bro, like, nigga, 
the Inland Empire always had different styles. We none, none of us had the same fucking style. None of our big homies did dance the same. Like, like, have you heard of Woo Clowns? Woo Clowns is like, mm-hmm. so you know, nigga, like Hoodie, uh, uh, Dizzy, uh, um, Vaisha, Tim, uh, 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 Day Day with the little arms, uh, 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 Tricks, Sin, all these niggas was dead, like right there with us dancing too. You feel me? So, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think nobody can have like fuck with the hell and have fun. I don't know about now. Yeah, man, I forgot. I forgot to. I forgot to mention one person who was also like, man, like, bro, that fucking extreme movement squad was fucking crazy. I forgot to mention Grim. Yeah, Grim's a legend. Grim is a legend, like, especially, especially after doing the sessions. Grim is a fucking legend, bro. killing everybody off in like thirty seconds. Legendary shit. Yeah, facts, bro. Definitely facts, man. For those like, is it sad that the new era of dancers didn't get to experience like that extreme movement, movement, bro? Like each fucking levels, bro. Cause to me it was three levels, bro. And we just touched on all like far as like the dancers. Like it's sad that man, man, that's the best time of crump, bro. I don't give a fuck what no one say. That's the best time of crump, bro. You know why? Because it was real. It was like you that like put like this. <coughs> Back then in that era, <coughs> if you was doing stuff that you wasn't supposed to be doing, you hid it from crump. But you brought it to the crump world to dance to let it out through your dance, not gossiping and other people and everybody talking about you. You know what I'm saying? Spreading your business. So it was it crump was more pure than. It was real. It was like, damn, I could ride a whole week hard, going crazy, and this and that and the third, and you know what I'm saying? Woo woo woo, woo woo woo, and and I can come here to let that shit out. Like now, crap ain't like that no more. Right. Like I'm, I'm meeting up at the session with a bottle of Henny and, and the block. Right. So it's like it's not it's, it's really not an outlet no more for expression. It's just a marketing tool for money. Do do you think that the IE had the best dancers, bro, at that time? At what time? That uh, stream movement time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, nigga, the only, LA only really had, like, chess homies. That's all LA really had. I'm not saying there was not no hard out LA dancer because you still had like Hurricane. Uh, really, that's the only really nigga I really like. Really, nigga that I really, oh yeah, forgot my nigga Boomer. Hurricane and Boomer, those is like monuments that, you know what I'm saying, that that's in the Crump world. I'm not talking about like Crump dancing. So, you know, no offense right. there. You know, right. Those are niggas that really be like the only niggas that carry it away. Outside of Chaz, if you wasn't with Chaz, you was considered basically like not tight in LA Back. County. So I think that's kind of why it made in the Empire like nigga, fuck that. We all gotta be tight because no matter what, everybody can still lie and say they not. But there's one point in time when everybody sat there and thought it was like, damn, I want to be an eyes or I want to be a part of the group because that was the the goal. The trinket, he was the trinket. You gotta get like top. You feel me? So I think that pushed us. That niggas in the high Right. I definitely agree, bro. So, like a lot of people to this day, is they hate chess because of that fucking um, what was it? The worldly versus godly people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you, you and your brother and a few others was the only one who didn't feed into that. What, like, why was all y'all like? Was y'all mean focused on like just doing y'all thing? Like y'all feel like y'all didn't need Chaz to be like heavy hitters in crump? Yeah, nobody needs nobody. That's the thing, though. Everybody thought they needed this nigga's approval, or or a group of people approval. To feel like they was validated. They don't need that shit. 
once I figure out, like I said, bro, it's a little bit different from a lot of people. It's a come from a spiritual background. There's a lot of people in this game that did not come from a spiritual background. So they're not entering, they didn't enter into the crump game with that type of mindset. Like, I'm dancing because this is a spiritual gift. You know what I'm saying? That nigga weapon, praise dances. You feel me? He really do like weightlifting, body or all that. So that comes with part of the body and speaking when he's dancing. I always play drums and, and the organ in the church. So that dance, it, was, it meant more to us than just a dance. So I didn't think it was going to be hard for me and me and him and others like us that come from a spiritual background that use this dance with the spiritual side, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, of course it wasn't going to be hard, you know what I'm saying? Once right. God gives it to you, give it to you, but I think we didn't feed into that because, like I said, we've been, like, we've been in the church. We already, right. we already, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? A lot of that shit, too, already kind of already, like I said, it's, it's business. I kind of already see what it's kind of doing, you know what I'm saying? A lot of this shit is, you know, all reunite, it's going too good, divide and conquer, reset button, reunite again, divide and conquer. That's all it's been doing, bro. Damn, like bro. Chess. Yeah, facts, bro, man. A lot of it's dope that, bro. A lot of people they getting to hear this shit, bro, because a lot of people just go strictly off Chess or Miho word. You know what I'm saying? Man, you can't hear that, and, and that's the problem. You can't just go off of what anybody just said. You gotta really go do your homework. You know what I mean? Mhm. Mm so, um. One thing I want to ask, when you and your brother was at the, like, peak of y'all career, would you agree to say that y'all was, like, two of the hottest niggas in Crump? Yeah, I think we was the best duo. At, yeah, at least family-wise. Actually, fuck it, yeah, the best duo. I don't know nobody else that was the best duo. And I'm not, hey, oh, wait, the bad news is, them bad news niggas was hard, though. The bad news, oh, yeah. But but then, then it was it was the, the only other ones that was like you know, like Jason and Jason. But you gotta realize they was already kind of working out. You feel me? They wasn't. They wasn't really like they were they were reinventing shit. He fit. He fizzing out, y'all. We're gonna get it right. As soon as he come back in, I'm gonna have him repeat it. The homie Spade. His sign back in. Yo, salute to everybody that's tuned in. We're gonna get the homie Spade back. He driving, so. But everybody that's tuned in, man, make sure y'all like and subscribe to that channel. Beyond Reality Podcast. The link is in this comments. It's in my bio, description, everything, man. Got the homie Spade on. He'll be back in one second. You know, he driving, so. But yo, man, like I told y'all, bro, I'm gonna be bringing y'all smoke with these interviews, man. Real shit, like interviews. I got a lot of dope. Looks like I got a serious lineup, man, that y'all gonna be surprised. And tonight, we starting with Spade. Hopefully, we can get Casey on next. Casey said he gonna pull up, so. Oh, I got the homie Riot in the building. R Riot, salute, bro. I got the I got my homie Outlaw in the building. Law, salute, bro. All right, here you go.
Gully B is back. Yeah, you way clearer now, bro. Yeah, man. Man, that's sick, man. Yeah, you good, though, bro. Yeah, uh, yeah, in that era, bro, I don't, I'm not going to lie. I don't think there was no duo like that, like, better than me. Listen, because it's like, like, put like this. In order to beat me a weapon, you have to do some dumbass tag team shit, like jump on his leg, do body shit. Like, like me and weapon came out just straight, like in unison, like you know what I'm saying, unique nigga. Like, like weapon was really, nigga. Weapon was more rawer, man. Like, I can't say that he raw now, but weapon was more. It was, it was more like, I mean, let me see how, like, what's the word I can say? A lot of his shit is coming from a feeling. It could be good or bad, you know what I mean? So it was like, then he was like genuine. We got Twin Spade in the building. Salute to Twin Spade. Spade fizzing out a little bit, but we're going to get this interview right, y'all. You can best believe that. Everybody that's tuned in, man, make sure y'all subscribe to that channel. Add me on IG. You know, I put on these dope interviews either two or three times a week. You know what I'm saying? If you want to interview, all you got to do is DM me, and we'll lock it in. I'll set it up. He fizzed out again, y'all. But we're going to get this. We're going to get it right. You know, he's driving, so. But, yeah, man. These crump episodes is just, just going crazy, man. Like, y'all don't even know about this lineup that I got, man. Spade, dude, he just kicking it off, man. Like, I want to tell a couple people, like, who I'm about to have on the show, but I got to kind of keep it a secret as well. But, yeah, man, like, got some heat. Soon as Spade come back, you know what I'm saying, we're going to get it right. He just driving right now, so it's no rush. Everybody that y'all missed the beginning part of the interview, you know, I'm going to have it on YouTube and Spotify. So y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. Here he come. He back. Good now, bro? Nigga, this service is crazy. It's all good, bro. We're going to get it right. We definitely gonna get it right, man. But um, yeah, man, you was talking about how uh, you know, um, weapon, uh, his dance style. You was uh, elaborating on. Yeah, it was like, it's like it was more pure than for me, like, like it was genuine. It's like a kid make. Like a kid trying to figure something out. So when he makes a mistake, it's just an honest mistake. You know, Crump wasn't about what the fuck you did right or what you did wrong. It was just how perfectly you did it to how you feel like you did it. And as long as you know you did it the right way, or how, how you know what I'm saying, the feeling of the expression, I'm pretty sure everybody's going to be able to feel that same feeling because it was an expression. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, like during that time, I don't think nobody was like really fucking a weapon at all. As as my dude, you know, Weez in class, they was they was tight. They was really tight, bro. Like I'm not gonna lie, but I'm talking about across the board, all the way across the board. Me and weapon got it every eye across every team. We went all the way across the board and we didn't skip levels. We didn't be like, 
fuck, we finna go be, we finna go over there so we can get that style or do this and not like nah, niggas didn't do that. Right. It took me, it took me like years to be even get under Ryan. And when I got under Ryan, like I was, nigga, I was young. I was already up in this shit, already making my own lane already. And then when I got under Ryan, that's when, that's when Crump stuck. That's when it was Crump. Because I was making love. It was Crump that time. You know what I'm saying? Because around that time, that's when we battled uh, Millennium Crump time. Millennium Crump time was uh, Stutterbox, uh, fucking Buck Wow, my nigga Milk. I don't know if you remember Milk. You remember Milk? Oh, yeah. A lot of people. Yo, I, was, I brought up Milk to a few, a few people the other day. They said that don't bring his name up because he was never a relevant in Crump. Milk was a relevant. Milk was Milk. That's like saying Eminem wasn't a, is not relevant in a rap game. Because Even he was whack. Because he's what? It's a different culture. He is. He's paying homage to a culture that he's not even from. He's not black, but he, he was lived in that culture. He right. lived in that public community. He grew up with them niggas. Those is his niggas. So, yeah, he's irrelevant. That nigga was tight, nigga. I don't care what Yeah, because, yo, nigga. bro, I was like, I was like, you know, uh, you know, um, he was in he he was in the cartoons. Nigga said he wasn't. Then I was like, he was part of you know he was one of the original. I think he was a, one of the original hooligan squad also. And they was like, nah, stop bringing his name up because he he's not irrelevant and crumb. I was like, all right. Did this come from his his? Did this come from his guys? Nah. Yeah, I don't know, bro. Cause I don't think they would say that shit, bro. Real shit, that, bro. That nigga. I'm not saying milk. I'm not saying milk was that nigga over there, but milk is a nigga from over there. You feel me? He's a nigga from over there. That nigga milk is tight, bro. Yeah, man. I don't. I I think yo, bro. I think a lot now, bro. A lot of crumpers, bro. They feel like they, you know, now they getting uh, they voice hurt. They feel like sometimes they gotta like. Water down another nigga career, bro. Yeah, that's the only way they can try to make their career bubble or sound profound better. But nigga, no, just tell the truth, nigga. And that's it. Facts, bro. Well, what's your what's your thoughts on people uh like throughout that era always wanted to have like that undefeated streak when it, behind the scenes they was taking L's. Yeah, yo, Law Milk was a um cartoon, but a lot of people say he wasn't. When I was talking to him last week, and I'm like, yo, Milk was, he was, bro. He, Milk definitely was, bro. You know I know Law. Matter of fact, Law, I think you might even been in that conversation when I brought up Milk. Law, I think you might have been in that conversation, man, when I brought up Milk on the cartoons, and they said that he was don't bring him up because he wasn't irrelevant. You know, us as a crump culture, man, we got to give people their proper homage, man. I think that's what's wrong with uh, the crump world today, man. A lot of people just want the light on them, bro. But it's like so many people that played a major part in this dance, bro. And that's his real shit. Boy, bad. What's good, King?
Salute the boy back. He just pulled up. This nigga Chase got to get his internet right, man. Man, I'm sorry, man. Nah, you good, bro. You definitely good, bro. Hey, hey, man. I, I, don't, I don't know about everybody else, but I, I'm really busy, like the president. It's all good, bro. It's definitely all good, man. So let, let, let's talk. Yo, bro, let's talk about like the main, main part that I feel that was like a important part of Crump, and it was a part of your career as well. The Boston, the Boston movement, man. You was the first person that left Cali and actually started a movement, bro. Am I right or am I wrong? That's like, I think first, you know, first and foremost, I like in Boston. That was a beautiful experience. This nigga Chase Internet. He he in a car though. Shut up. Hey, I'm I should be good now. I should be good. I can't see you. Hey, yo. I should yo, be good. Sign, I, I, sign in I, and sign back out. I just did. I just did that. Now, I should be good now because I was going through this little part of my little my route. So I was going we, can't, we, we can't see you on the screen, bro. Sign in and sign back Sign out, just sign back in. Let me send him in a request. There we go. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm out there. I had to go to my honey come hide out. Yeah. You know yeah, you good though, bro. You see, uh, yeah, I said Boston. Boston was beautiful. But, you know, was, uh, so, was, how, so how did you, what, wh why was the transition from, uh, Cali to Boston? Oh, I got booked to come out there. Um, I had a little homie out there and I had a couple of niggas. You know what I'm saying? I had a fan base. People who knew I was out here in Cali killing shit. Killing shit. So, you know, they booked me to come out there and do a show. And the last day that I was going to leave, nigga, they, nigga they, they, they asked me to stay. My nigga, they like, stay out here and help us get this shit cracking. And, you know, they like me say, you know what? Why not? Why not? I might as well make a choice to make it chance to see a change so I, I think i did i stayed and you know i was trying to get get them on the wave of a heads up like nigga, because not once i wanted them to dance like me at all because none of my little homies dance like me they had characteristics like me but none of them dance like me but i was trying to show them a wave like nigga, stop sucking our dick in cali nigga, and dance like y'all so we can find out how y'all dance and we can Get newer shit from out there to out, you know what I'm saying? So, because already around the world, people's already unstuck on that SK shit. Like, uh, Crump King, SK, I don't need it. I gotta dance just like them. I don't need that just like this. I don't have that track like this. It's like, man, credit for old luck. That motherfucker's brainwashed. So, I was, I was basically like the cure 
a coronavirus at that time to come let them know, like, no. No. Dance like me, you know what I'm saying? And that's how, you know. Bro, a, a lot of shit pioneered off of little, little shit that I have done, like, little shit like that that I put in place to, to go to Boston and have the niggas dance and try to get them to dance like them and start their own movement to be them cause a ripple effect for an extreme movement to and have Mickey to be like, be you, dance like you. Nigga, all, this shit just don't come off of people's head over the night. It's like a it's like a pattern set. It's like generations, you know what I'm saying? Martin Luther King came, Malcolm Max came, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like patterns, but people don't pay attention to it. So, yeah, going out there was awesome experience, though, bro. I said, I honestly say that, nigga, like, I done battle everybody that, that actually meant something that they, who they feel like that, they really was somebody out there, genuinely, like, nigga, when I, the, the first nigga that I battled out there that I, I nigga, I cut the head off the serpent straight off the top was Spartan, nigga. Spartan was... One, in that era, in that time, Spartan was like one arrogant ass nigga, bro. And I cannot lie. At that time, he had every right to be loved. Spartan was tight. But he was missing something. And what he was missing was the pureness of dancing like like him. Because now, he don't dance like now through his comments being like, I think, you know, you know what I'm saying? He probably understood as he got a taste of being in a chess and experience of California life and understanding like it is not what it really is. And he tapped into his inner core itself to where now you see how Spartan is now. Nothing like that. You know what I mean? Then he was so much tapped in being a clone, he forgot who was like when you're so much trying to be like I was gonna be just like Kobe Bryant, be like Kobe Bryant, nigga, you don't know what your real fucking talent is or your real core a peak of what you gotta do or what your mission is or how you finna come. It could be you that's finna change the movement. So I think a lot of niggas forgot that shit and he was one of them shit. You know? I, nigga, I know for a fact, hands down, niggas can't tell me nothing. Like the videos is up on YouTube, my nigga. The first Buck City, nigga. I smashed this nigga off the top. And at that, at that event, that's what causes the whole shit for everybody in Boston to understand and see because a lot of niggas in Boston was already scared of the niggas that in Boston I was fucking with Chaz and shit already. They like, damn, we, we can't go nowhere and dance because nigga, we're not gonna be tight. Right. That's the way they was basically looking at me. But when I came in there, I was the the axe that would, nigga hit the ice. It's like, nah, nigga, no. So. Tuck, how, like, you know, by you being a riot, bro, how did that help you in your um dance career? Like, you know, all due respect, I'm going to tell you like this. Me and Riot didn't even dance a lot. I, I had characteristics like that. Like, 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 because my favorite dancer was not fucking right here. Right, and I'm still with my big on My favorite dancer is beat ass. So I always wanted to do technical shit like beat ass. You get what I'm saying? Now, how did Riot help me? My dancer? Riot helped me as a man better, bro. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie, bro. Like, that nigga, I was under Riot as a, as a, as a young boy. Bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Can I can I say that at times that day he showed me like he had big homie characteristics? No, and I can't say that because nigga, as every year go by, he's getting older. I'm getting older, nigga. He's learning how to be a big homie too. Like I'm learning how to be a little homie. So it, it like it was hand in hand. You get what I'm saying? So that nigga taught me how to be great. Who the fuck I am today, nigga? With this nigga dancing, nigga, I smashed that shit. That's why I really don't look, I don't, I don't feel bad upon not, not, not being in the movement. No, it's only two type of people in that movement now. It's ones that really care about the movement and trying to be better. I'm just straight up, honestly, want to make money off of it. There ain't no other way around it. Niggas can lie. And it's the other ones that feel like, fuck, I was a failure with it. And I just want to double back and just start 
beating um, beating people just to get clout. That's the only other way. <laughs> That's his only way, bro. The shit's already set in stone. That's man, man, you speaking some shit right now, bro. Word of mother, you is. Man, you know what's crazy, bro? My favorite part of Crump is not even the dance part. It's the music. Let's let's talk about the music, bro. Now, for those who don't know, you is arguably not even arguably. I got you in the top five. You and my Mount Rushmore of beat makers. How did you start to get into making beats, bro? Nigga, I remember, nigga, like I always making beats, and my mom, like when I'm coming up with my mom, Mister. Fucking, uh, I started making beats. I started making beats at an early age because I always I was playing drums in the church. You feel me? And I started playing the organ at early age. You feel me? So I started making beats, and then you know that just came with you know dancing and all this shit. And then I remember, I'm telling you, bro. Like I said, it's, it wasn't even about dancing. I remember being at Ryan's house. I had my laptop. And I was laying on his dad's living room floor, bro, and I was fucking around with Fruit Loops and playing around and shit. And I just started putting shit together, and that's how I started developing my sound. And the first beat I ever made was, right now, Lil C. Lil C loves that track. That's his, like, he, he told me perfectly that's his favorite track. On, on, on YouTube right now, it's called uh, J.818 Crump Track, you feel me? And that was the first beat I ever made in my life. And from there, it just went on from there, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Riot was making beats, too, around that time and shit. That's when uh, I think, like, I said, like, maybe six months later or five months later, he made dots on the nigga head, all that shit. But, yeah, that shit, I've always been making beats. You feel me? Just even outside of crunk, you know, uh, trap beats, all type of shit. So, you know. If if someone wanted to do a beat battle with you, would you take that uh that challenge? Honestly, I'm gonna be real. It depends only because, bro, a lot of my shit I didn't sample. Everything was an original sound. I, I didn't sample a lot of shit. You feel know I me? Mean? If I sampled shit, it was like for like an intro. It wasn't with the song or the beat. So it's kind of hard to challenge somebody that's doing the total opposite of what you're doing. You get what I'm saying? Like like fucking Alphabets. Ain't nobody who ain't nobody fuck. I don't know who who I don't know who can fuck with that nigga. And I, I fuck with Roxanus. And Jay Tight and them, all them, they tracks is good. But Alphabet, that nigga mine is another, he's on another, he's, he's on somewhere else, bro. His mine was somewhere else. All his shit was original. Why do you think all that shit, I don't give a fuck, what, nigga, beat cycles. All that shit came from his mind. And all they did was slap Chess face in front of it. So what, it made it seem like Chess is doing all that shit? No, nigga. No. Mm -hmm. Yo, bro, I've been saying this for the last month that Xavier is the goat of this shit. And everybody tell me, get the fuck out of here, bro. I don't understand why niggas won't pay homage, bro. I'm going to tell you something, uh, uh, you know, this is my opinion. But just look at the, the factors and shit. When a person come in, any type of sports, game, situation, everything, and they know they did their duty and went in and left shit behind that people can still argue in and left and on to do other shit, you tell me what that mean, bro. 
I just told you, the niggas that still can't, the ones that feel like they still didn't, didn't make it, they still in this shit. Trying to. 40, 35, 36, trying to. Because they still missed, they still missed the mark on what they, you know what I'm saying, thought it was. So it's the same shit. Bro, Xavier, I don't do, Xavier's a blueprint to the new music of what we was dancing for, bro. From everything. From all the fucking cage tracks to fucking everything, bro. To everything so niggas cannot lie. Nigga, we was in Papa Psycho Garage listening to his tracks. Nigga, I would bring my tracks over, nigga. That throw my shit out the one like a frisbee and my shit was hard. Anybody else tracks, nigga, throw that shit out. Xavier tracks was the only tracks that was being played for years, my nigga. Years, bro. Years. Years, nigga. Every nigga from Chaz over there had that shit. Yeah, nigga. See, that's Dizzy right there. Dizzy was dancing with fucking Hoodie. You need to interview him, bro, too. That nigga, them niggas was the nigga, the main nigga from Wu Clans, all that shit, bro. I'm telling you, that, nah, hell no, nah, bro. We was, nigga, we would, nigga, look, put it like this. Dizzy and Hoodie and them was going, practicing in, with fucking all the top notch niggas in, 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 in LA, like chasing them niggas in, the outlaws and niggas that, Everybody's touching shoulders when the movie just, just came out, right? Nigga, we had all the Xavier tracks. We had everything new that they danced to, bro. And we never was going to the events and shit. That's how cold this shit was, bro. I'm telling you. So, like, a lot of that shit, like like I said, when a lot of niggas be lying, like, oh, this nigga was the best nigga in the world. Like, I don't give a fuck. Chaz is not the best, bro. There's no way he can be the best. That's, that's, like, that's like saying Jordan is the best in the world. He's not, nigga. He can't be, nigga. It does not matter, nigga. Kobe's not the best in the world either. There was good in the eras and they time, nigga. Straight up, nigga. Period. That nigga, no, bro. Xavier, nigga, you can't even tell. Nigga, you can't name three. You can't name. You can't. Even from there to this time, bro. No cap, bro. I'll match you a thousand, nigga. You cannot tell me three beat maker uniquely quality sound that's Bad, that 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 you think that can be Xavier, you can't, bro, nigga. Bro, I bro, I've been saying this shit since I started these Crump episodes, bro. These niggas say that I'm bugging, bro. I'm like, yo, how the fuck am I bugging out, bro? I'm telling you what I seen and what I heard. I'm not t telling you like some shit like, oh, like this nigga told me this. This is, bro. I was dancing at the time, bro. All you niggas was dancing to Xavier shit, bro. Cause I was. Every blink, every blink zone, every call of buck, every, nigga, there's a nigga. Nah, hell no, bro. If anybody said that, with, nigga, I would never say that. Okay, I would never even say that. That I was even like. And bro, I, I know it was tight, bro. And I know, and I, I'm still trying to make. I got shit, but. Bro, that's, that nigga is the one. Listen, if it wasn't for him, I think a lot of niggas would still be serving and wobbling and shit. They'll still be doing the hill toe, doing the, the Shake City shit. If it was not for that man's mind, his creativity, bro. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, bro. I'm Yo, bro. You. Yo, bro, niggas don't know from all that shit Extreme Movement was dancing to, I'm talking about like y'all stages. That shit was all Xavier shit. Bro, that Cage 3 shit. Bro, matter of fact, your fat flash battle, that was Xavier fucking track, bro. Excuse me, goodness. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. My thing is this too, bro. Like I said, niggas can do, that's just like, that's just a part of business, bro. Like, you can have talent. But if this nigga got a bigger platform, we are gonna slap his face on it. But you doing all the work? That's just that's just how that's just how I fuck up. Like like that. Um, you know how they were saying like China East and all that shit, and that's all Xavier shit, bro. Yeah. But these right new, yeah, but these new niggas don't know that. They thinking that oh, Chad made that Chad made. So so you mean to tell me this? 
Chaz made all this shit by himself. If Chaz made all, look, if Chaz made all these beats, all these rap, all this shit came up with it all by himself, bro, then what the point was, what the fuck, what, f- it was no fucking point for this movement. There was no point for this movement. If he did all this shit by himself, my nigga, what point was for this movement? I thought this movement was supposed to be unity. To tell the truth. Bro, man. Happy. No lies. Love. All this. You know what I'm nah, nigga. Like I said, business. Bro, this right now is my favorite interview, bro, because you're the only one that came on here and speaking the truth, bro. And, like, you paying homage to other people, bro. Like, you're not just on here bigging up yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't argue with niggas for them. I didn't got niggas saying, like, yo, tell that nigga to, uh, I'm like, yo, bro, I got my thousand right now that he will smoke any of you niggas, bro. And, and, and yo, the crazy shit is, if Xavier don't want to do it, I got all his shit on my CDs and phone. I'll battle the nigga for y'all and blow y'all out, bro. They would have to make shit around that type of time and era with that. They would have to really do that because, see what, see, see what niggas don't really realize, like if you really not into music like that, shit that you make five years ago is really for this time now. So you really don't want to put Xavier shit from back then with this shit now because that shit now is going to clash with that. The shit that Xavier was making was, he was making orchestras, bro masterpieces he wasn't making he was he was freeing your mind bro he was letting you know you can do whatever this music right now in crunk is designed to make you jab left kick right that's it's not it doesn't have a it doesn't have a fucking it doesn't have nothing where a basis where is it going the only basis where it's going is win or lose so what is this dance really it's, it's for bro like yeah, I'm saying, man, I'm the wrong nigga to interview, bro. I'm gonna tell you the real shit, bro. Yo, bro, why, why throughout you and um, uh, Casey's career, they was trying to like separate y'all, bro. You know what? Honestly, I don't. I don't know, bro. I honestly don't know. I can't really. I can't really say I know why, but maybe my my own opinion, what I could think is why, is like this, bro. Bro, when me and Weapon is together, nigga, it, I don't give a fuck who you was, bro. You can't you can't see me and Weapon when me and Weapon is together, bro. There's no way, my nigga. You feel me? I'm his front. He's my back. I'm his. I'm his back. He's my front, nigga. Ain't no way, my nigga. So I think what a lot of people wanted to do, especially like, you know, some of his little homies and shit, you know, it was like I told you before, it's you no know, divide and conquer. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And back then, too, we came up in an era where a lot of little homies was like doing groupie shit. You feel know I me? Mean? You know what I'm saying? Always picking up a nigga up for sessions and paying for his food, walking to get cheesecakes and shit like that. So maybe that was one of some of their agendas, like, you know what I mean? Like, we keep these niggas mad at each other or make them be like they're in secret competition. But I'm going to tell niggas this right now on this on this platform. And he'll tell you, bro. If it wasn't for me, it will be no fucking weapon, nigga. What is y'all talking about? You can ask him, nigga. Did I say I'm better than a weapon? No, I did not say that. But everything that came from this blood, from these eyes of what I seen, he was there right with me. So that's what it is, bro. They always wanted to see have like secret competition. Have you noticed there's other brothers that in this game that battle publicly? Duos and all that shit. It was a few times that always it always would like try to go there. But it can't. And the reason why shit like that can't go down like that, because when it's real and pure, you can't you 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 can't separate it. You can't put it against it. You feel me? You know, like it, it's been time me and Casey try to be like, look, 
we're gonna throw an event and we're gonna battle. It, it don't never, it don't never work out like that, bro. It can't. You feel me? Cause it's real. So you know, a lot of his little homies, you know, like I said, a lot of it was coming from his little homie. You know what I'm saying? I feel like they just wanted his attention and shit. You know what I mean? Like, that's my brother, nigga. Like, I don't, I've been, I've been having attention from him since Nintendo 64, nigga. So, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Like, yo, bro, man. It's undeniable. Like, y'all, you and Casey's impact in Crump, bro. Like, it's, bro, man. Like, niggas don't understand. Like, I don't think of people that's going to be watching this, bro, is fully understanding what I'm saying, bro. That was the best era of Crump, bro. And and I call that era, bro, I call that Crump era the MySpace era, bro. To me, that's the best era of Crump, bro. Yeah, every, bro, like, honestly, I don't even think it's Crump no more right now. This shit's Buck. This is Buck. It's not Crump, bro. This is not Kingdom Radically Uplifted Mighty Praise, bro. It's not. That's over with. It's over with. This shit is called Buck. You feel me? And niggas got to just come up with a new acronym for Buck that has something to do with marketing, promotion, and um, switching up, nigga. That's it, nigga. This is not a Christian dance no more. This is not an outlet for it. It's not that no more, bro. When I can, look, when I can stand in the church parking lot with this and this, it's a conflict of interest. I'm not now. I'm not saying niggas is not gonna do this when they leave, but this dance and this movement in the church, per se, that people portray is supposed to be like a hospital, right? We're supposed to be able to go there to get well. So if if, if you got certain people that's not doing this, doing these certain things to to, to keep the, that thing in order, so we can get well. But portraying like y'all God and all this shit, but then now y'all slipping up with this and shit. Now you're making it okay a part of this movement. So it's it's not crump no more, nigga. This shit is business, marketing, and promotion, bro. That's it. It's not crump. Do, do you do you think the business aspect of this shit is the reason why like crump is in like the uh, shambles right now? No, because it, it was always. Nope, because it's always business. When it started, I was getting booked. It was getting booked. Nigga, it's the leaders of this shit. The leaders of this shit, bro. Like, like no, bro. I grew up. I'm an '80s baby, so I grew up. I grew. Up, I grew up in. I grew up how it was like this. Like, no matter what, you have respect for your elders and people over you. You feel me? It's not what you do, it's how you do it. So, but like I said, back then, these niggas was doing this shit. Big homies fucking on their little homie, smoking weed secretly, drinking, doing worldly, regular shit like, like how we was. But, bro, we were just younger and naive, and we didn't really look at it because we were so wrapped and captivated of the dance because they was giving us some messages in here and there. But that shit changed once... These same leaders start publicizing other shit. Bro, you can't be talking Christian shit. Go from not saying nigga in the track, cuss words in the track, and now you're doing it, bro. Psychologically, that fucks up people's mind. Bro. And then the excuse you're going to use for that is, I far short, I'm a man, and God knows my heart with you. You right. He do. So if God knows your heart, you a man, why you couldn't just pick up the pieces and keep going like you was doing? Because this is a this, this is a dance that you said you created. God gave it to you to give to people. So basically, God, Chaz is the pastor. God gave Chaz a flock of people across the nation to preach to. So you got to be careful what you're doing. And he's one of the leaders. That's why it's like this, my nigga. It's like this. He was the same ones talking about, like, talking about riot. And other niggas, when they come to the session, high and 
I just it's just hard off of weed and shit. Like you know, we, but but nigga, niggas was real. They wasn't coming there like, yeah, we God people with the rule. They was like, nigga, like I smoke weed and so what, but I still love God. Niggas still pray, niggas still do that shit, but y'all wanna, you know what I'm saying, like judge us and shit. So it was like, bro, that's how that shit. It honestly like, bro, I only that's the only person I could really blame. Bro. I think it was him. I'm like, that's the only thing, bro. Because when I started hearing a lot of this shit, it was like, damn, it's crazy, bro. Like, and that's true, bro. He's a pastor. He's a, he's a pastor of a church. How many scandals y'all seen? Once a pastor fucks somebody in the church and they get out, I think that church is thriving anymore. I think the people in that church really believe in shit. No, they. They're just used to going to that church so they can be content and want to be, per se, loyal to God. They're not loyal to that man no more. So they loyal. So everybody's loyal to this movement because they still want to keep up with the Jones, my nigga, like I said. The ones who feel like they didn't made it, they, they still in it. The ones that they know they made it innerly and made an impact in the movement, we just you know, keep going. That's why, like, you tell me, a lot of niggas be talking shit, but I don't never fucking hear this shit. But I could, I promise you, bro, I could expose a lot of niggas being groupies in my inbox from the last, like, five, six years. I don't even dance no more, niggas still, you know what I'm saying? Like, doing a little shit like that, but you hear a lot of talk, but, you know what I mean? But that's how it is, bro. It, it was Chaz and the leaders and shit, bro. A lot of the leaders, they messed it up, my nigga. They Damn. We're not saying that you're not human, but when you're a manager, when you're a CEO, it's certain shit you don't do in front of in, the, in, in front of the employee. You get what I'm saying? You don't do that type of shit. They don't go to the after hour parties where y'all smoking cigars and drinking scotch and shit. They don't do that. They're not, you know, what I'm saying they don't do that because now look, everybody is fucked up. Bro. Every session I go to is nothing but drinking and smoking. And, it's more drinking and smoking and fucking and selling weed and all that type of shit. Then fucking the dance, bro. So, wow, man. A lot of people don't know, man. But this is why this show is called Beyond Reality, bro. Because this gives a, a, a insight for people that wasn't there and didn't know what really was going on, bro. Like, and the thing about you, though, uh, Spade, like you speaking like real shit, bro. Like you not coming on here talking like saying shit that don't look like you saying like real shit bro um, I'm, I'm telling you from a from a, from a, from a uh, outside perspective though that's why because at the end of the day it's not about me bro already came already came in the movement and did my shit why well, think look niggas can't talk shit unless you didn't do your shit i did my shit facts you feel me so it's like I honestly can't, can't actually, like, talk about a lot of this shit, bro, because I seen it for myself. I seen it, and I was in it, bro. I was in it. I'll say it one more time, though, nigga. None of y'all niggas was fucking with Xavier, bro. Stop lying, nigga. Do, do not lie, bro. Everybody from Chance Camp, everybody, nigga, like, all you heard was Xavier shit. Beat Cypress, China E, Boots, all, the, all them samples, all them shits that niggas is using now, nigga. That came from him, nigga, his creativity, nigga. He didn't want to kick the door down. How you know? Like I said, nigga, he was doing this, and they just put their face on it, nigga, to make it seem like they was doing it, nigga, and they was not doing it, nigga. He was doing this shit, bro. <laughs> man. Man, I'm so glad to hear that, man, because, bro, I've been saying this shit for two months, bro, and nigga saying, like, you bugging out, bro. No, they bugging out. I'm like, yo, man, like, right is right, man. Real is real. And that, bro, it's some niggas that came on my show and was like, oh, I never danced to nothing he he uh put on. I'm like, yo, are you, there's no way you didn't, bro. I'm like, yo, y'all got to stop this shit, bro. bro all Don't this get around music, certain niggas and act, you know what I'm saying? All the music that's leading up to this, all the music that's now, niggas, stems from him, bro. What the fuck are they talking? That first beat that you just played, crazy, my shit. Who did that kind of sound like? Xavier, nigga. And it wasn't subconsciously like I was trying to mimic him. 
He was the monument of our fucking way. So how can they say some shit like that? They can't, nigga. They, it don't make no fucking sense. The only way they can't is because they wasn't in that time. But that's why we're trying to let them know, like, nigga, just because you know about shit now and think this all this music now is what it what it's not, nigga. It, no, nigga. All these niggas is popping up like you popping up, nigga. Like they try to say concrete was like one of the hard. Yeah. No, he we had some cool tracks. He's not better than Xavier, bro. I don't know. That nigga, I don't know who better. I, honestly, probably the only person that got like a close sound to him is Buckmouth. Swear to God, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm speaking real shit, bro. Like, how did it? Buckmouth. Other than that, nigga, nobody can come close to how Xavier is. And the thing is, bro, like, one thing that I like about him, bro, he left his impact and, like, He's not on, like, the social media. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he just doing his own shit. That's how you know when somebody was supposed to come in the movement, do their shit. You feel me? That's how you know, bro. Like, I'm telling you, man. These niggas better stop one. They got to stop oh, one. Bro, man, like, shit, man. So what's up with your music career, bro? Like, let everybody know what you got going on. Oh shit, uh Chase Doe Benjamin, you know, that's my name. That's what I've been going by for about, you know, a good ten years. Mm -hmm. right, right after I got out the music, uh crumple scene and shit. Um like I dropped a mixtape called Aquafina. It's on all, all platforms. I dropped it on Juneteenth for this year. Uh then I followed it up with my album Pain and Drip. I just dropped that on my birthday, October eleventh. You know, uh, shit, just straight bangers, bro. Just talking real life shit. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to just go tune in, you know. Chase Doe hey, Benjamin. Happy, happy belated, bro. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chase Doe Benjamin on YouTube. I got videos out. Uh, you know, clothesline about to drop soon. Eat the Cake clothing. You know, uh, got Eat the Cake South down out in Atlanta. My little homie, uh. Smith Sion right there, Smith Sion 478, the base street. Y'all need beats, you know what I'm saying? Engineer, high quality shit down there in the south. Y'all hit him up. I'm finna start that, you know. Um, just only little businesses and shit, man. You know, just still standing out the way, dripping and splashing, bro. Like, just getting this music shit going. Ain't nothing changed, you feel me, from the dance world to the music shit. Just, you know, staying active and, you know, trying to. Trying to stay on top of things, bro. Especially with this music shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yo, when, when when was at the point of your life when you was like, when you stopped like dancing? When you was like, nah, I'm kind of done with that. It just got boring, bro. It didn't. It didn't have no meaning. I don't. Somewhere down the line. It just stopped having meaning to me. They didn't have no feeling, bro. Like, and I wasn't in this dance. I wasn't doing this dance just to do the dance. Just to, you feel me? It didn't have no meaning. You feel me? That dance stopped having no meaning. Let me ask you a question. Have What's you up? Ever no. No? Okay. Now, you have done something in your life to where you love the feeling of it, right? Yeah. Crump, bro. But once you lost that feeling, you lose kind of like a drive because the feeling that you was actually doing it for, it's not in that environment, bro. Yep. I wasn't going to sessions to go, like, kill niggas, like, anticipating to kill niggas off and down. Bro, I had, nigga, I, nigga, at 17, I had my daughter. I was on the street, nigga, really hustling, bro. Having a hard time at home. Then the daddy's bored. Like, real typical black teenage people go through, or just people, period. I don't be racist. Kids, period. On the daily type shit, you feel me? So that was my outlet. Like, you know what? That's where I could express myself and do that. After I just, after I started seeing, like, niggas are still dancing the same, mad repetitive. And there's a reason for that, because the environment wasn't giving us no growth. Damn, I didn't want to dance no more. Then it was like, 
got to the point where I got, I started to see like, I used to go buy two hundred dollars shoes just to come to the session and Timberlands to fuck them up. And the people in this culture, nobody really really cared about each other like that, bro. It was it was cults and shit. No, but please charge. It was cults. Power all off. It was sets and all that shit up in there. So when I when I start to like fizzle out of that shit, I seen I seen. I really seen what it was for what it really was, bro. Business, my nigga. It's business. I promise you, that's all it is, my nigga. Like, and, and sad to say, every business has, it's like a pyramid. So who's on top of the pyramid, y'all? Chess. He governs us. What he says, go. And if it don't, you get your ass blackballed. <laughs> hey yo, I had a, I had to do. He he said he couldn't do an interview because Chaz told him it doesn't benefit his dance career by doing this interview. I know, but it could definitely damage Chaz's. See. So you gotta realize, Chaz is just not a human being anymore. Chaz is like this. You know what this is? This is a brand. So he would do whatever he has to do to protect his fucking brand. So if he tell you, if you buy my Chaz liquefied Gatorade water, this shit will help you enhance your breathing apparatus to crop longer and hit harder. Sorry to say, but nigga, he got the numbers. He got all that shit to show it, to do it. Nigga, that's how the world works, bro. So niggas gonna do what he say. That's crazy, man. I guarantee. Damn. You, that interview, it would have, it would have, like, like, like this interview. If niggas really watch it, if niggas really watch this interview, what we having right now and read between the lines of what the fuck I'm telling them. Cuz! They will grow some, they will grow some nuts and start understanding that they can really dance like they said. And be I agree, bro. Cause Riot definitely. will tell you, nigga, Riot taught me shit, but I didn't dance like one of them. Riot will tell you that himself, nigga. It was only probably like one person I tried to be up under. But when I drew it, nigga, and all the under for like no cap, made like 48 hours. Who was that? Swings. Tried. But he was just too, it wasn't my style. Like, nah, and, and I'm saying, like, nah. Like, 48 hours, like, nah, I can't even do that shit. At that point, we was always going to uh, Oceanside for Armageddon, going for them sessions and shit, the Temecula sessions. But yeah. That ain't true, man. Damn, man. Like, wow, man. This shit is history, man. Yo, man. Damn, this is history, bro. Yo, what's up with the, with that dump mob? What happened with that? That's crazy that you said that. Yo, I told you I got shit for you, bro. Uh, you got, bro, you pulling out some shit. <laughs> Nah, cause you pulling out stuff that I can actually touch on that that that's gonna hopefully open niggas' eyes and cause it's a lot of shit. A lot of shit was unspoken or it was just left alone. Mm -hmm. Yo, be hey yo, bro. Be before you answer that question, bro. When we first got in contact, I, what what was your thoughts when you was like, I bet you was like, how the fuck does this nigga know all this shit, bro? Yeah, look, I looked at your pictures. I'm looking like. This nigga look hella familiar. Like he was the nigga at every fucking place. It just didn't really say shit. Really Yo, like... bro. Yeah, bro. I lived in Cali, but I moved to uh New York in 2007. But you know, I was still in contact. Like, bro, I was the nigga. Like, you had to be, bro. Cause bro, you know I was the nigga. A lot of shit. Bro, like I was a nigga that you know how a regular nigga, bro will watch you uh let's say they'll watch like a youtube clip back in that time 
You know, a regular nigga would just go on YouTube and be like, oh, this nigga tight. Me, I was studying every fucking thing, bro. Like, bro, I like events, 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 like every shit. That's how I know so much, bro. Like, I was like, I'm a student of this shit, bro. Like, I know a lot of shit, bro. Like, that's why a lot of niggas... See, 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 that's the thing. You know the concept of crime. You know what this really means, bro. So if you was to dance, bro, it will be pure. Because niggas, that's what niggas was supposed to do. They supposed to sit back and study this shit. But a lot of this shit came from the big homies, too, because they didn't fucking teach, bro. They really wasn't teaching. They was doing, look, they was doing what the preachers was doing. Telling us one thing and doing something else, my nigga. Telling you. And that's crazy, bro. That is crazy, bro. Yo, everybody that's tuning in, man, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. I see some people in the chat ask me, is this going to be on YouTube? Yeah, it's going to be on YouTube and Spotify. So for everybody that just tap it in, yeah, subscribe. the link to my channel is in the bio. It's in these comments. All y'all got to do is, you know, tap into the channel, man. But we ain't done yet, man. Me and the homie Spade touching on a lot of shit right now. A lot of but yeah, bro, let everybody know about the, the dunk mob. A lot of niggas don't even know about that shit, bro. All right, so look, this is what happened with dunk mob, bro. So I went out to Boston, you know, I got shit really. You know what I'm saying? Really moving, got niggas understanding that, you know what I'm saying? Building their momentum up. Letting them know they can do this, nigga. They don't have to look up to us to search this web. So Dunk Mob is really, like, smashing shit out there. I'm smashing shit mm -hmm. out there, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? All the that I have, they were smashing shit. Nigga, crew members, all that shit. So what happened was, and this is no bullshit. Like, I'm telling you, it's a, it, this is business, all right? This is business. Watch. You tell me be after me when I let who is the next person to go to Boston? Please tell me the right name from Cali. I know you know. Crush. Huh? No, it was not crush. It was before crush. Oh, man. Knucklehead. Oh, yeah, you're right. Joey was. Joey. Yeah, so he was, my bro. Mind, in my mind, I'm already thinking this is a, a ploy of what they already implanted. SK is on a rise that's already been out there like two and a half years already. SK start implanting some of SK members in Massachusetts. Yo, bro, was... I, yo, bro, I think Joey and Crush was there at the same time, bro. You know what? They was. They was. They were there together. Yeah, bro, because I, I, I seen Crush and them niggas a lot, bro. They were there together. So look, New York already had SK members. Yep. They was trying to move them over to Boston because, you know, that's low-key like a rival. Boston, New York type shit. You know, so they start moving in to Boston. So as I'm getting dunks niggas together, basically, dunks, all the members from dunks is from Massachusetts. A, a lot of SK members was becoming from Massachusetts. You got SK members that's coming from Cali and New York, coming to Massachusetts. I personally feel like they got weak, mindedly. And the rest of the movement in Boston that was supposed to put the big B on their back, not the big C, nigga, not Cali, nigga, the big B and move their own movement, how they supposed to move, you feel me? And they didn't. Because once them SK niggas start coming in, tie start flushing them in, they all just want to dance like fucking robots. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened to Dunk, bro. I brought Man. Dunks out to Cali, and that's when I battled Knucklehead. I beat Knucklehead, too, that day when I battled him. I beat that nigga in, in Mama Eyes. Somebody's living room. Yeah, somebody's living room. That's when uh, 
I have some foreign some foreign little homies out there. Those were like Argentina and shit. Yeah. So like, um, but yeah, that's that's basically what happened, bro. They they broke down like a Chevy six four. They couldn't they couldn't take it. They just like you know what, fuck it. We just want to do what they doing. You feel me? So now guess what, y'all? What this man say go. So if you ain't buck a crump, you ain't buck, nigga. Unless you pay him for a fucking class. No, you're not dancing right unless you pay for my CD, my music. Y'all fucked it up. Damn, son. Come on, That's man. Fuck. Come on, man. I told you it's the worst thing you can do. Have an interview with man, Spade, Gully Brooklyn, Chase Doe Benjamin. I'm going to tell them the real shit, nigga. Because every, yeah. everything, I'm, everything I'm saying about myself, it's on the internet. Real shit it is. Real shit it is, bro. Everything, if, nigga. Can't nobody take nothing from me. And you can't add to it. Bro, that's why this is one of my, like, top two favorite interviews, bro. Because, like, talking to y'all, like, I, I relate to that time of crump, bro. Like you said, bro. Like, like, for example, what you just touched on now, bro. Like, a lot of niggas in my city... They know who I am, bro. Like, I, I started Crump in my city, right? They they call me out on the regular, bro, and I keep telling these niggas, yo, I haven't danced in over since 2011, but you niggas cannot out-crump me, bro. No matter how you, what you niggas say, bro, you can't out-crump me, bro. Fuck the hat tricks and all that other shit. You can't out-crump me, bro. You know why? It's because they wasn't there when it started, bro. They wasn't there. Like, put like this. Me and you wasn't even there where it started. But we was there when the roots from the sea was starting. To grow. Bro, we was there, bro. We, we was at, like, you know, it's Jesus, per se, Chad, and the 12 disciples at the table. We was the congregation sitting outside with the table, nigga. So we still, we still knew everything. We still, learned, we still had everything still, bro. Them leaders at the table was supposed to fucking lead. And they fucking did. One thing, one thing I want the uh a lot of people that don't know, bro, that was going on too, is back then, bro. The reason why a lot of people think some of these niggas is undefeated or, and can't be beat, because a lot of the footages was held, bro, where they didn't see these niggas taking L's, bro. That is correct. Right or wrong? I'm, nigga, that is correct, bro. It's like, put it like this. And a lot of people know this shit, bro. They just want to be naive. You feel me? It, it ain't no different from motherfuckers holding footage of of, of, of fucking... Uh, uh, Muhammad Ali. Or any other greater greatest figure that's done something, bro. That's took an L. You know what I'm saying? Or got his ass beating sparring, but they don't put that footage up. Got his ass. Nigga, I don't give a fuck. If you dance at an event and you dance at a session or you dance at it behind closed doors and you lose, it's the same shit anywhere, bro. It's the same fucking shit. And a lot of niggas, them niggas be biased like that. Like, since it wasn't at an event or on footage and nobody can vote or judge it, nigga, they, they don't count. Nah, hell no. Nah. Nigga, that shit count. It was a lot of beef in that time, bro, because they had niggas like the Crump Kings and SK. Them niggas was holding everybody footage, bro. But like you said, that was the business aspect. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I've been that Koki house where I seen so much footage, and I was like, damn, what the fuck? And I don't even know where that footage is at now to this day, bro. Like, sometimes I'll go back on and type in the Crump Kings thing just to try to see if I can grasp on. I, nigga, I went to the stint. Nigga, I hit this nigga up his Facebook and all type of shit try to find out shit, man. On this oh. nigga to try to get my shit. You feel oh, me? Coach. But, yeah, I think Chaz and that nigga just got rich off that shit. They still getting rich off that shit. Bro, you you know Koki sold that shit to Chaz, B-Dash, and a couple others. You know that, right? All the merchandise and shit. He sold, he, you know, he gave that to them. I never knew that. Bro, I know everything, bro. Yeah, I'm going to have to come out there and fuck with you. Yeah, bro. He gave him that shit, and them niggas sold that shit, bro. 
So, so these men of God took a dance that was for us and sold it for currency. That's a fact. As I was saying, a lot of these big homies don't know what it means to be a big homie, bro. They don't. They think it's just teaching a nigga how to dance. That's not being a fucking big homie. It's about being a big homie is having real integrity, my nigga. I'm I'm glad you touched on that, bro, because piggybacking what I, what I just said, um, with the niggas in my city, like you know, I, I tell everybody, yo, I don't dance no more. I haven't danced since 2011. Like, once that era stopped, bro, I said, fuck it, because like you said, like, it, I didn't get no the same feeling out of it. But it's niggas in my city asking, like, my little homies, like, well, why why is that still your big homie if he don't dance? I tell these niggas, or they, or they will tell them, like, yo, this is my brother outside of this crump shit. Like, nigga, I go to this nigga house, and we don't even talk about fucking crump. You know what I'm saying? We just rock out without even mentioning crump. Bro, if it wasn't for my little homies, I wouldn't even be talking to you right now, bro, because I left that crump shit alone. They told me to add this to my podcast because they know how much knowledge and shit I got. And, you know, they still got the love for it. But I had left that shit alone, bro, in 2011. I just really started talking back about crump, like, maybe, what, April? But it's that goes to no. bro, like, the work that I put in, bro, where I could come back on the scene, bro, and get this type of shit, like, this type of uh, traction that we're set now. You know what I'm saying? But see, that's what I was telling you. So you do identify the feeling of what this shit's supposed to be, bro. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's, it, it's, it would never be the same, bro. It would never be the same, my nigga. And, you know, for a lot of niggas, like I said, a lot of these new niggas, and when I say new niggas, I ain't talking about, like, three years. I'm talking about for the last past 10 years, nigga. You new niggas, I'm telling you now, bro. It's y'all coming in with the crazy ass assumptions and opinions and, and fucking nigga already writing, having a narrative to shit already. And y'all really don't know what the fuck really went down, bro. Y'all don't know how a lot of this shit turned like this or it's gone like this. You feel me? Like right, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like right now, like I feel like one there's one genuine dancer. Like I say he's my favorite dancer, one genuine dancer that I really feel like that was really, you know what I'm saying? He didn't I felt like they didn't give him a voice like that, or maybe he didn't want it was B Dash. B Dash was always quiet, you feel me? But that just to show you, like I said, Riot wasn't a big homie with and, and dancing for me. He was more than out of dancing, you feel me? That nigga Riot and then nigga then the cane pulled up. Nigga, damn, they had to do some shit for me. You feel me? Some, some real shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's always been, it, it was beyond dancing. Cause like you said, you could be around your nigga and y'all not even talking about dance. Nigga, there's been times I was, nigga stayed at Ryan's house for weeks. Like we probably danced probably like one time. But because you're building that relationship, you building that, 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 that bond, that growth, that whole what Kingdom. Radically uplifting, mighty prayers, nigga. When this, when you got the spirit, you got the spirit, nigga. That goes with with your growth and everything. I don't think a nigga was being tight just waking up watching videos. <laughs> nah, I think what made me tight was like, damn, baby need diapers. I gotta pay his bills. Oh damn, my my niggas going through stress. For, damn, dad got cancer. Mom ain't feeling good. Sister, a hard worker, school hard time. You know what? I'm gonna put all this aside. I'm finna go crump so I can release. Those was how you got better and you grew. Not by mimicking somebody that telling you that, well, if you don't do your own something like this, that's not crump. You going you can you going against everything that you saying about this spiritual shit, bro. So real like shit, bro. A lot of big homies was in big homies, bro. You feel me? It was just a real, real talk. When I was a little riot, so did you do my All the ones in the area, I don't know how they feel. They just know my social media. They know where I'm at.
Yeah, he fizzed out again, y'all. But, yeah, I got a couple more things to touch on in this interview. Like I said, y'all, that's tuning in. Subscribe to the channel. Add me on IG, man. I do these dope crump exclusive episodes like maybe two or three times a week. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I got a lot of this dope. I got a lot of dope shit coming up, bro, that a lot of people, like, y'all not expecting for me to have on my show. And, yo, y'all just tune in, man. Yes, everybody that's asking, it's going to be on YouTube and Spotify. So, y'all tap in, man. The link is right there in the comments. I got it pinned. Y'all can see other uh, interviews that I did with the Crump World. Man, I got a lot of dope shit on that channel, son. So, you know, y'all just tap in, man. Add me on IG, all that good stuff. But me and the homie Spade ain't dumb, man. We definitely not dumb. I got some more shit for him. Spade didn't think I was, Spade didn't think I was gonna hit him with some of these questions, but I got a few more for my boy. But look, but look, yeah, let me just say this last thing though, look. So like, so 12 years ago, bro, I'm 30 now. So do do math, 12 years ago. Bro, when I was little riot, even when them niggas was preaching all that God shit, they was, nigga, fucking their girl little homies, drinking, fucking other crunk girls. And, like, like, ain't shit changed. Like I said, just niggas was not had their eyes open because they was dangling crunk. It's something about religion or spiritual shit, when you when you put that in front of people's face, yeah, they may not be subjected to it, but when you have an incentive with it, bro, they 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 actually go for it, bro. Basically, it's like a cult, my nigga. They, they just go for that shit. So during that time, mm -hmm. nigga, we didn't see all the other shit. But I seen that shit because I was one of them little homies that was, nigga, pulling up, nigga, smoking weed before these sessions. You know what I'm saying? Hoping that these niggas don't know I was high until they approached me and knew I was high. And then guess what? They smoking with me as I'm a little nigga do them too. So now I'm like, wait a minute. My eyes is open. Y'all niggas is telling us this and that and that. But y'all doing the same very shit that you telling us not. Like I said, bro, it was already fucked up from the beginning. These niggas never was opening their eyes or they didn't care. Like I said, niggas is just, nigga, like, you know what I mean? I know, I know I probably was a couple nigga rides or, you feel me, or I had niggas that, because I was spayed, nigga. Honestly, I don't even lie. I never really used nobody for rides and shit. I always was on my own shit. I always was on my shit. You know what I mean? Like, getting to a bag, pulling up, doing whatever I had to do, you feel me? So, but that's what niggas was doing. They was using niggas for rides and paying for their flights and you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Wow. Man, you letting people know about a lot of shit, man. Like, damn. And oh, if these shit. niggas deny it, if they deny it, like, you weak, nigga. You weak sauce if you deny this shit. Because it's already done. It's already done. Don't deny it. Because guess what? A lot of niggas are still doing it now, nigga. I ain't gonna even say no names. I can say some names right now, bro. Some real shit, bro. Actively up in that crump page right now, niggas still like low key start niggas for them to learn how to dance or fly them out here and do this shit. Like, bro, the, the nigga it never was fucking like that, my nigga. You know, back then, if I found out y'all niggas is having an event in New York, nigga, all my niggas in Cali were paying for our old shit that we're coming down there. We talking to y'all like nigga, or we all piecing up. Why? Cause it's a movement. Now it's like, pay for my flight to get out there. Because I'm from Cali and we made this dance, so this is what it is. That's fucking stupid. Yeah, bro, because, you know, a couple people ask, because, you know, I'm going to be at the corner session doing a media event. And, you know, a couple dancers asked me, like, yo, who booked your flight and all this and that. I'm like, I booked my own shit. I'm, and they, they was like, yo, but, you know, with your invite, you should be... All that should have been taken care of. I'm like, well, they should have did it. But I, you know what you should have did? Well, why the fuck you didn't inbox me to pay for my shit? You talking all this high side shit. 
Why you didn't pay for it, nigga? That's the thing, bro. It be them, be them niggas that nigga. <clears throat> Sit down, nigga. Sit your ass down. You don't even know what's going on. You should ask him. Are you dancing tonight? Oh <laughs> shit, nigga. Fuck. Man. Man, it's crazy, man. Holy shit, bro. Hey, yo. One, two more questions, bro, that I, bro, that I gotta ask. The first one is, why do you think that all, like, the OGs and vets in your era or before right now is coming on the platform besides you and a few others? Like, they coming on the platform, bro, they kind of, like, fighting for their legacy. Or, they, you know, they want their legacy to be known because, you know, cats <laughs> like Chaz and other people have swept their shit under the rug. I'm I'm finna nip this in the butt, but remember how I just told you? You got people that's in this earth that's been put here to... See, I wasn't put in Crump to be the best fucking Crump dancer. I was put in Crump to do what I needed to do for a certain period of time. Because that's that seed I planted then is growing now for my music, for my clothing line, and all that shit then. So niggas that's trying to fight for their legacy then, honestly, an another man can't shun a nigga legacy, y'all. Only that man can. It's like I said, they didn't do they didn't do what they were supposed to do actively in the game. They just thought it was just about going out there beating niggas, getting booked to go to. No, it wasn't about that, my nigga. All my little homies really doing shit right now. Like look, like like, like freedom. I was, I'm the really. I, I, I was, he was making beats, but he was baby beat jacker. I inspired him how to make beats. Freedom is one of the hardest. See, when you're a big homie or OG, you're supposed to do them type of things. Plant a seed to leave with somebody, so they can grow off of it and keep going. You get what I'm saying? So a lot of niggas, they just came in fucking with the dance. Cause they was looking at the boy Baz and the soldier tights. Shout out to soldier tight too. Cause soldier tight, soldier tight was hard too, bro. He was hard. Yeah. He's a quiet, quiet nigga. He's a quiet nigga. Boy Bad too. Him hey yo, that, that nigga, that nigga Ron was one of the freshest niggas though, bro. That nigga drip is, was crazy back in the day, bro. He remind me of like the the niggas from Dipset and shit, like Cameron yep. and Joel. And he was the only yep. niggas really like that. He would be like, yeah, bro, that I'm, nigga I'm, I'm, crazy, I'm gonna tell the real shit, bro. You feel me? Like, so that's what it really is, my nigga. So, nigga, any nigga that's on here got up here really got to sit here and validate they self and shit. Like, it's like you said, they fight for a legacy. It's because they didn't see what the shit was for what it was. They didn't see it. They was too busy. And that's what you get when you do that, nigga. You call yeah. nigga, you distracted. You was distracted. Like I said, Riot wasn't my big homie to teach me how to fucking dance better. Crump was given to all of us already through David, through the Bible. This shit was supposed to be a dance, bro. Riot was put in my life to be a big homie to help me get to the next stage. That made me be ever to be a better dancer. Riot didn't put the call in and say, oh, I want my little homie to be a uh, fucking, what you call him, with the woo woo. And this was woo, 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 all this and put him in the crumb king. He didn't validate none of that shit. Nigga, my work spoke for itself. Them, hey, you know what? R.I.P. I'ma tell you who was really on my side. And niggas was not the first that I had at my house at my baby mother's house in Ontario. Bro, if you Hold up, bro. Say it again, cause you fizzed up. Before you hear me. Hold on. It's fizzing out. One second, bro. It fizzed out. What you were saying about Zarius, bro? Can you hear me? Yeah. What you were saying about Zarius, bro? I said, I said, RIP the Enforcer. Enforcer spent the yeah. night at my house. And we was in fucking Ontario, nigga, at my baby mama's house. And, and nigga... A week later, nigga, I became a fucking crump king. And now that I remember who called my phone, it was Enforcer. He was like, bro, I've been telling these niggas up here that, nigga, you will body any of these niggas for they spot to be you a know, crump king. And, and you know what? Uh, when, you was, when you was battling Flash, Zarius was the one that was mainly hyping you up. Girl, I remember now. That's what I'm saying. He called me. 
He said, bro, who you want to battle? Knucklehead? Or because I, I wasn't supposed to battle Fly. I was supposed to battle Knucklehead or Tim or one of them other niggas. The other nigga, the light skinned nigga I used to be with him. Like, he was a chess, he was a chess little homie too. I forgot his name, but one of them niggas. They were scared to battle me and Weapon around that time. No cap, nigga. Swear to God, no cap, nigga. They, they were squint, they, nigga. I just came off of a crazy loss. Like, I just lost like one battle in my life. The worst battle I ever lost was to Young. You know the old, the old Young boy? The old Young odds? Short? Nigga yeah. whooped my ass, bro. He whooped my ass. And I was a little riot then. After that, nigga, I ain't never. And then I said, like, it was like two months fast forward into that. That's when he kicked off all the old Crump King and he was adding new additions. And that's how he added Weapon, Caliber, me. And that's when I and around got that call from Enforcer. Enfor and so it was really Enforcer's influence that really did that. Cause or, because that nigga was at my house for like a whole week and a half. So obviously he's seen this shit and honestly can tell like bro, just like I'm about to say, like crumping, you nigga, you don't have to fucking practice and crump. Yeah, you gotta practice your craft and sharpen it, but this is a spiritual dance. Nigga, you don't have to it's like you said, you be around your big homie and not have to dance. It's in y'all. So when you do get ready to dance, nigga, that shit just really it should just come out that you didn't expect it to do, my nigga. So you know. This dance, this dance really was not for fucking everybody to do, my nigga. It just started to become a fucking hobby when the leaders start being loose, my nigga. And that's what happens with anything. Any type of thing, when you start being loose and accepting anything for what it is, it, 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 it don't become a a, 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 a real a, a real family or entity. It becomes a business, bro, and a cult. And that's all it was, so. Yeah, Enforcer was the one that influenced that. And, you know, yes. RIP to Enforcer, bro. Yeah, man. RIP to ER, man. Yeah, that was a ER. sad thing, man, when we lost the homie, man. Yeah, that, man. That, that shit fucked me up, bro. Like, stop. You know what I'm talking about that, bro. That shit yeah, up. man. Last, last thing, bro. You, you and your brother had this, you know, y'all came up with walls. Weapons, aces, lethals, and spades. Tell everybody about that movement, bro. Man, me and that nigga salute weapon the, always. Salute, salute to the homie Jay Slot that just pulled up. Yeah, yeah, salute. Shit Jay like Slot, we got to get you on the slope, on the show, King. Weapons, aces, lethals, and spades. It was basically like, you feel me? Because Weapon had different names and shit. You feel me? And, uh, you know, I only had the Spade family out in the West Coast. And then I started my own branch out in the East Coast and down South, you know, the Gutter Brooks fam. You know? And, uh, yeah, nigga, that's just a, a, a gang of buck ass niggas with different styles. You feel me? A uh, mm -hmm. family. Um, like I said, I haven't danced in a minute, so I haven't. I, I know that they they active. They still be doing the gang of shit. You know, zoom in, merchandise is popping, classes. They still doing a body art shit. You feel me? In fact, I was just in one of their classes like about like two weeks ago. When Weapon was teaching a couple mm -hmm. niggas and shit. You know, a lot of y'all niggas could learn something. Y'all go zoom in on that shit. But uh, yeah. you know, other than that, like, yeah, that was just some shit we started back then when we first came out. You feel me? So. Yo, a lot of people don't even know that, bro. Yeah, yeah, You have a lot of knowledge, bro. You know a lot of shit. Man, you feel me? You know a lot of shit, bro. Say it again. I couldn't hear you, bro. You fizzing out. I said you're very. I said you're very knowledgeable of a lot. It's still going That's in shit, and out, bro. It's still going in and out. Me? Yeah, I can hear you, you now. Hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear I you now. You know a lot of shit. You know a lot of shit, man. You know a lot yeah, of man. intel. I definitely appreciate it, bro, man. Like, yeah. yo, bro, like, bro, man, like, 
niggas don't even know, bro. Like, nigga, I got fucking, hold on. Let me show you something. Like, like I don't know if you can see it, but on my arm, right? This shit right here, it's a Krupp nerd. I don't know if you can see it good, but it says Krupp nerd down my arm, bro. Like, bro, I was a student of this shit, bro. Yeah, you know like, your You know how some, some niggas, bro, yeah, some niggas, bro, like, them niggas, bro, like, some niggas go to school for a PhD, bro, like, nigga, like, I was, like, a student of Crump, bro, like, but I feel, I, I feel like it's so dope that, you know, like, all my hard work paid off, bro, because now I'm, like, in the links with, like, watching y'all niggas that I grew up with watching and, you know, this being in the culture, bro. Right. Because, you know, what you're actually doing is this. You're giving the younger generation a chance to choose how they want to keep shaping this dance, bro, by knowing the truth. Because if you don't know nothing, you you, you feel me? You'll just start doing shit your own way or just picking up where the last motherfuckers fucked up and left off. You feel me? So what you're doing is very important, man. Is important, and hopefully, this shit don't fall on deaf ears, and they don't. You feel me? They just take this for just whatever. No, they really like you know. Read between the lines and start to try to you know what I mean, maybe pray for these niggas, maybe talk to these niggas, maybe do something to get them to, to uh, you know start saturating the the movement and getting it going to a different direction where it should be. But other than that, it ain't going to ever be the same, bro. It ain't going to be the same. That's sad, bro. That's sad to even even hear that come from you, bro. Like, man, yo, like, damn, man. That was the best time of my life, bro. Hell yeah. Because there was no money involved. Bro, like. Niggas used to pull up the sessions. The sessions was free back then. Once man, you start bro. to get with money and all this shit, bro, like, come on. You know what I'm saying? Who was getting paid for the dunamis sessions? Who the fuck you think was getting paid for the dunamis session? That church, nigga, like, come on, bro. Who think was getting that bag, bro? Like, you gotta really think about these things. Because if these niggas were so much for the community and the movement, bro, when you're doing something for the community and the movement, an event or anything like that, you're supposed to give back to the community. I mean, so if you do an event, Let's say you do an event on Saturday. Everybody pop out and you make $7,000. Bro, you should make an invite announcement for the next upcoming week. I want everybody to come out because now we're going to do something that we're giving back to the community that's been providing for this. But they don't, my nigga. Like I said, niggas, look, I've been pimping since nigga Lil Riot, J. Riot, in the street. Y'all doing the very same shit I'm doing. Yep. It's the same exact shit, bro. Everybody's, it's the same shit. Y'all just doing it for small trinkets and at a, a lesser value. And at that, it, at that, it's more disrespectful because you're not giving a nigga a choice. You're actually really finessing. So you just pimping. Y'all pimping niggas. Book my flight. Pay for this. Do that. Do this. Nigga, I nigga, I give employees choices, nigga. So I'm telling you what the real is, my nigga. So hopefully y'all niggas open your eyes and see, man. And you know, tap in what beyond reality. This is it right here, nigga. You feel me? I ain't been around cause nigga the feeling ain't there no more. Nigga, I'm I'm always gonna be hard, nigga. Trust and believe. <laughs> that that's never gonna be an issue. You feel me? Mm -hmm. All I gotta do is call a weapon, hey. Give me six months. I need six months, nigga. I'm going to be back in there, nigga, smashing. But it's not about the dance. You feel me? It's about the feeling. You know, shout out to, uh, what's his name? Rowdy. He just had a birthday party at the A1A. Mm -hmm. Love, lovely setting and everything. But the vibe was different. I'm used to seeing Miss Prissy being a monument and a leader for women for the crown. 
I ain't used to seeing her out there with a blunt in her hand, drinking Hennessy. I'm not used to seeing that. Am I judging? No, no one so ever. But see, through Crump, it was people like her that was condemned it from other people that, oh, you have to be Christ up to be just like this, to be like that, be like that. You get what I'm saying? Come on, bro. Niggas got to be one way, my nigga. Be one fucking way, my nigga. So that's why I'm saying. Yeah, man. Yo, one, one thing I want to let everybody know, I want to give uh, a shout out to the homie Law, man, because Law is the one that's, um, he put me in contact with a lot of y'all, man. So salute yeah, shout to the out homie to Law, Law man. man. Yeah, shout out to Law, bro. Like, too, too, like a lot of niggas don't know. Like, like I said, bro, bro. Nigga, Chaz has been defeated, bro. I'm telling y'all that now, bro. There's no, like, there's not one man on this earth that's never been flawed, my nigga. I don't care what you're saying. Chaz has took an L before, bro. Chaz has lost a riot. I seen him lose it to him twice. You feel me? That's, that's just not a personal opinion, nigga. That's a fucking fact, bro. But people got to get out of this biased shit. Like, if this man don't say, Okay, look, put it like this. Everybody that's watching this, let's apply this. You also talk about what this man said and how everything happened. Apply that same shit in real life. On the all the rules and governments on everything else. You can't. So stop that's... fucking capping, bro. Ain't no fucking way, bro. Rules are meant to be broken. Laws are not meant to be broken, my nigga. That's just it, nigga. No, nigga. So, niggas need to stop capping, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Yo, bro, I, uh, let the homies know, bro, Um, from the IE, bro, to pull up on the show, bro, so they can, you know, tell they, they uh, side of their story and their career, too, as well, bro. Yeah, you need to get... uh. You need to get you, you, you need to get playground on there. You gotta get oh Jay Cannon, he's right there, eighty six Rilla. He's on he's on right now. That's him. Gotta get him on there, bro. You gotta get Stucks on there for sure. You gotta yeah, get Yeah, I gotta get I don't have um I don't have his IG or uh you gotta give me his IG or Facebook. I'll, I'll reach out to I'll him. I'll send it to you. Get I'll him on the show. You. I'll send All it right. to you. Yeah, you definitely gotta get you definitely gotta get them too for sure. You feel me? Um, and you know what? I ain't gonna lie, bro. It's one. It's one. You gotta get hoodie. You get hoodie, bro. Hoodie is legend. I promise you. Hoodie is a legend, my nigga. Like, hoodie is the tie dye. Hoodie is the tie dye. Hoodie is the chest, my nigga. Hoodie. Like, sucks is the IE. That's just the I as put this shit out this way, you feel me? Mm hmm And then, you know, that shit got passed down, you know. I'm not bro, I can't front. I'm not just saying it, just to say it, my nigga. Everybody think it's ruined, but it's it's weapon, my nigga. This is weapon shit, bro. The I is weapon shit. And can no one argue, can no one act, argue that, bro? I ain't saying nobody not tight, but you know, Rowan is under Chess. He danced like Rowan Chess, and it, uh, you know what I'm saying. After weapon, it comes chosen. There's nobody else, nigga. This is weapon shit out here, and it's not because nigga how he danced, nigga. It's the the what he did, the shit that he did, the steps. Nigga, he got little homies, bro. He he building shit, bro. It was it. Like I said, some niggas are lost. Why do you think Weapon could kick back and just, just and just dance? You know, Weapon don't care about losing and winning. That's why he don't fucking lose. Cause he was here. He was put here to do something. 
And that's what it, you know what I'm saying. That's what he's doing. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's, it's too many people caught up in wins and wins and losses, bro. Click hopping, trying to be up under certain niggas just to have clout, man. It's like it's a lot of foul shit that's going on in Crump, bro. Yeah, but you can be the one to clear that air because you're gonna have people. Anybody can show me a video where I lost, we can talk. Like I said, everything about me is on that internet. That's why I'm speaking. I'm speaking the fact because I seen it and I was there, my nigga. I was there for a lot of this shit. So, you know, I'm condemned because the Christ Up movement, bro. So that's why you see a lot of these niggas that I was condemned with the Christ Up movement. Now they're wilding out now. Chad said, you have to do this. If you don't do this, you're not buck. You're going to go to hell. You're going to do that. She was like, it's like a brainwash, bro. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Eat the cake, yeah, though, man. Tune in, man, to all my music. You know, Pain and Drip. Album just dropped October 11th. Chase Doe Benjamin, all platforms, bro. We got, I got some really popping shit out. I'm dropping 10 new videos. I'm all, uh, I got six done. I got Three more to go. I'm going to drop all fucking up. All the whole month of November, bro. I'm going to drop two every week or three every week. However, nigga, it's going to be crazy shit going on the rest of this whole fucking year. Clothesline is about to drop, man. Outlaw got a clothesline dropping, man. Eat the cake. We got fucking uh, Crocs that's about to drop. We got jean jackets, um, hats, um, beanies, every fucking thing you can name of, bro, that's going to drop, nigga. We gonna drop that shit bro in the meantime in the between time why this you know this the best podcast alive that's bringing niggas up on here bro we need to be able to you know let niggas know what's going on and shit so got a, little, a lot of good shit y'all niggas uh, tap into my my youtube though chase though benjamin you know spotify apple music it's, it's there man i got some good shit same same way how i'm speaking to you now factual shit breaking down shit on the topic what we talking about, a lot of my music got a lot of uh, shit like that so you can understand, like, damn, this nigga, like, really, he's speaking, you feel me? And that's that's what it's all about, man. Each one, reach mm -hmm. one, teach one. We all supposed to do that, bro. You feel me? If we can't do that, you feel me? Sh shit don't work. I'll plan how we is. So yeah, I really man. appreciate me, appreciate you bringing me on this shit for me to tell you a little bit of insight and hopefully... We'll get another one in on some other shit, the different yeah. subjects and shit, man. Because yo, you know, yo, I, when I, um, I'm going to hit you, you bro. So you may be the mode. You may be the mode to change this shit, bro. Maybe. You you yeah. may be. You, you might just be. If everybody yeah. just be lit. If everybody be slow to speak and just listen to everybody different and, and, and then put the pieces together and understand. I think I, I think I think it's gonna be you that done it, man. And I salute you for that, yeah. bro. Yeah, I definitely appreciate it. And, and yo, bro, as soon as I touch down in Cali, bro, in a couple of weeks, I'ma uh, make sure I get in contact with you. Yep, let me know, definitely, man. Definitely, man. It's definitely a pleasure. All right, man. Yo, thank you again, bro, for pulling up on the show, Brody. Yeah, yeah, man. Eat the cake, man. Yes, sir. All right, bro. All right, peace. Yes, sir. Man, we had another fire episode, man, on Beyond Reality Podcast. Everyone, please like and subscribe to this channel. You know, the link's in my bio. You know, this full interview will be on YouTube. Man, y'all add me on IG. I'm going to be bringing y'all dope, dope, dope episodes two to three times a week, man. But y'all know my slogan, man. I'm just a guy that like to talk about reality. Peace.